At a young age, I didn't realize what the effects of FGM were because I didn't know something was wrong until when I got married at the age of 15. And because I went through type three FGM where I was infibulated, I had to be reopened in order for me to have sex. FGM is a very deep-rooted tradition. It's practiced for various reasons. One of them is to keep girls a virgin until they get married. Another reason is because of cleanliness, but I think for both things, I think it's just a myth. Women don't need to be mutilated in order for them to stay virgins, and I don't think we are unclean if we didn't go through FGM. As a woman, I think um, the worst complications for me is knowing that I'm not whole and I'm not intact. I want to feel like I can experience everything, but now it's like something is missing, and I don't know what life would have been like if that wasn't missing. I've seen women that are affected by fistulas. I've seen women that have different infections because as a direct result of FGM, and I've seen people that, because of the trauma and the experience they had when they were going through FGM, that has psychologically scarred them. I think there's um, a huge relationship between child marriage and FGM because when you look at a lot of communities that practice FGM, they also practice child marriage. So I think it's very, very important for us to invest in these countries and empower more young people. Because if we're talking about ending FGM in a generation, we need to make sure that we're putting our money where our mouth is. And We don't want our kids to keep going through this practice. You know, it's only when we speak up for ourselves, it's only when we stand up for ourselves, would our daughters see, you know, we need to empower the younger generation.